So we've moved on from the past and we are currently in the present. So we're going to talk about what is trending currently with COVID. There's, there's a variety of things, but there's three things in particular that I wanna talk about this evening. Next slide, please. The first thing is I wanna ask you all, why do people still wear masks in public? The mask mandates have been listed, but why are people still wearing masks? What do you think? To express, express the spread, to protect the spread, pre-existing conditions, being cautious, security blanket, because it's cool, yes. Right, there's a lot of very hip designs for masks <laughs> that produce the spread, helps reduce allergies. Okay, great. Next slide, please. Many of you have already mentioned being cautious. You know, I think a lot of people see people, others wearing masks, and you don't know their life circumstances. They may be caring for somebody who is unwell or can't be vaccinated. So you, you don't want to assume their reason for wearing a mask. And really, it's, it's essentially, you know, their decision to do so. Um, somebody might be going through chemotherapy. If somebody is receiving chemotherapy, they can't be vaccinated. Um, some are potentially uh, in, in process of an organ transplant. Um, some potentially, um, you know, just had a baby and therefore would like to, to be extra cautious. So a variety of reasons that people are being extra cautious and continue to wear masks regardless of the mask mandates being lifted. Potentially they were recently exposed to COVID. So therefore are wearing a mask. Because he, that action is, is, is a courtesy. You're thinking of, of, of other people. You've been exposed to COVID and you don't know if you are in fact COVID positive. It takes five days before you're no longer contagious, but we don't know if that's an exact science. It depends on the person. Some are, some are only contagious for a shorter time period and some are longer. So the average is five days. After five days, you after quarantining, then you go out for another five days and you're wearing a mask or I'm sorry, for 10 days. And then when you receive a negative test, then you can take the mask off. Next slide. Five and under is just actually has been approved for vaccines, but uh, a few days ago was not the case. And so modeling the behavior of wearing a mask for kids is a choice that a lot of people are making because it feels unfair for a lot of kids that they're wearing masks and their, their parents and other adults around them are not. Or potentially a child can't be vaccinated for a variety of reasons. Some kids have, have health issues. Some people, like some, one of you said, because it's cool. Some people wear a mask and, and prefer to continue to wear a mask. At the gym, when they're out and about, they feel like it's more, more, they feel more comfortable and there's nothing wrong with that. Let them make that choice. The bottom line is that some people may choose to wear a mask regardless and let them do so. No need to bully them. No need to give them a hard time for wearing a mask. People are wearing a mask, respect their choice. It's their business, leave them alone. All right, next slide and we're gonna switch interpreters.
So for the last several months, maybe you've been getting together with friends, going to different events. We've been getting together more and more. You know, let's say you're hosting a party. You miss seeing your friends. You haven't seen people for two or three years. You're hosting a party. What do you do? How do you make sure that your guest and yourself is safe? Some ideas, some suggestions of how to keep gathering safe. Don't hug everyone, okay? Maintain social distancing. Limit the number of people attending. Keep it a small group. Have an outdoor party, yes. Utilize masks, hand sanitizers. You know all this stuff. You know, don't say, hey, oh, this drink is good. Do you want to try it? Right, keep, keep your own beverages and food items to yourself have uh, an outdoor movie party, and outdoor gatherings. I mean, I, you know, I guess you already know the answer. So we'll move on to the next slide. <laughs> yes, as you said, outdoor, having an outdoor gathering is the safest choice. You know, more and more people are renovating their outdoors. Uh, they're making sure that their backyard looks good. They're uh, adding additions to their houses. They're, they have tents and different structures so that people can uh, feel safe outdoors. Um, you may have fire pits or bonfires. We keep the outdoors interesting. Next up. Uh, maybe some of you know who this is. She has a health-centered platform. I absolutely love her. If you can follow her, please do. Uh, this is Tracy Ann. So if you're going to host a party or you're asking people to bring you know, their own drinks or you're supplying food for people, do communicate with everyone. Uh, and also add in some COVID guidelines of how you're keeping yourself safe, how you plan to keep others safe. Um, if you're vaccinated, if um, you want everyone there to be vaccinated, have those safeguards in place. Openly communicate with your guests. Don't keep things a secret. Don't think that this is a taboo issue. This is a common issue. Uh, and this is something that needs to be talked about as we continue through this pandemic. At best, be vaccinated. Some people are bringing their children to parties. Uh, just remember that children five and younger are, are, are not eligible to be vaccinated. So I would recommend keeping kids at home, getting a babysitter, but uh, checking in with your guests to see if they're vaccinated. And if they're not, uh, you know, don't, don't bully them, um, don't tease them, just let them be, but also make educated decisions for yourself and your party. So what should you do? What should you do if you're not vaccinated or you're caring for someone who's at risk. Should you let that unvaccinated person come to your party? What would you do? Keep your mask on. Yep. Any other ideas? Uh, get tested regularly. Be aware if you uh, are COVID negative or positive. Stay outside, wear masks, get tested. Yes, testing, testing is key. If you're outside, you should be okay, but I would say not always. COVID can be transmitted uh, outdoors. That's, that's always a risk. Next slide, please. You should wear a mask. First, I would heavily emphasize the number one priority, your mental health is crucial. I know many people have quarantined themselves, they've isolated, 
because of fear and paranoia, but you miss friends. And finally, you're invited to a party. Oh, but I haven't been vaccinated. Take a moment to think things over. For the sake of your mental health, seeing friends is important. But you can do something to be safe about it. You can wear a mask, you can get tested, you can wash your hands, you, you get tested before and after you go to the party. You know, have these safeguards in place for yourself. You're allowed to do things, just be smart about it. Um, and again, lead with love. Just because someone isn't vaccinated, don't uh, instantly disregard them from joining your group. Okay, what's, what's in place? We're outside, we're gonna be wearing masks. They tested negative. Okay, I think it's fine. But mental health is first and foremost crucial. So once you're home, shower, wash your hands, maintain social distancing, these things you all know. If you become sick after a gathering, what should you do? Yep, you can quarantine, you can see a doctor, stay home, Self-monitor, recover, rest, and get, order a big box of tissues from Amazon. Oh, I love Amazon. Uh, during COVID, Amazon was so helpful. So big ups to Amazon. So let me say this clearly. The most common response when a person sees that they are COVID positive is shock, of course. The second most common response is embarrassment and shame. You know, I did something wrong. People are going to think poorly of me. Uh, they're gonna think that I'm reckless or did something inconsiderate. You're not the only person that might think this way. We, all of us feel that way. All of us feel uh, this internalized shame and embarrassment. So you're not alone if you do feel that way, if you do feel shame or embarrassment about being COVID positive. Recognize that these emotions are normal. And at the same time, communicate with those that you are around. It's our responsibility to take care of ourselves, our friends, our family. So communicating with everyone and not keeping it to yourself is the responsible thing to do. Few of more options on the next slide regarding communication. So these aren't the only things you can do. This list is, is not exhaustive. You can let people know who were in the gathering with you that you tested positive so that they're aware. We're within the deaf community, we're a very small community. You, so maybe you can tell the host as opposed to telling everyone at the party. Tell the host that you were COVID positive and then the host can disseminate that information. Saying in a more neutral uh, or vague way, one of our guests tested positive, make sure to monitor your symptoms, get tested um, and go from there so that it's not all the blame isn't on one person. Uh, the last option, if you do keep things privately, uh, private, you can uh, anonymously tell your contacts via tellyourcontacts.org. You can Insert that information, you can tell who you need to tell, but it keeps your information private. Bottom line, whichever option you choose is communication, keeping people informed. That's the responsible thing to do. Next slide, please. What is long COVID?
So long COVID has started to emerge as a more popular topic recently. What, what do you know about long COVID? Does anyone know anything about long COVID? Ongoing side effects, yes? Side effects from COVID uh, continue to persist. You're feeling sick, you're feeling unwell, but you're not sure why. Tired, burnt out, going to an alien world. <laughs> uh, symptoms that never fully dissipate or go away. Long-term effects, and the mental fog. Yes, exactly. Next slide, please. So what long COVID pertains to is that the effects of COVID persist, taste, fever, et cetera. Uh, in general, uh, those symptoms will uh, go away within one or two weeks. If you're still experiencing COVID symptoms after four weeks, that's what's called long COVID. Some people recover and then they feel sick all over again, but still test negative. They go to the doctor, they get test done, they get x-rays, MRIs, et cetera, but they're still feeling lethargic. They're still feeling what they felt when they were testing positive. Uh, and the doctor will often diagnose that uh, as long COVID. And research, research that doctors have done diagnose that as long COVID. It's still a new phrase, a new phenomenon, but there is more research coming out about it. Um, those who have not been vaccinated, vac excuse me, interpreter, those who have not been vaccinated have a higher risk of experiencing long COVID compared to or actually people in the beginning of the pandemic who really suffered um, without the option of getting uh, a vaccine, they're starting to experience, experience those symptoms once again. So the people who experienced, experienced COVID before a vaccine was an option, as well as the people who have um, contracted COVID more recently uh, without being vaccinated. Uh, are more likely to experience it, experience long COVID. Yes, it is concerning. But the first thing you can do is go see your doctor, get that process started, figure out what's going on. Uh, last July, July of 2021, Congress approved um, adding long COVID to their list of uh, disabilities and diagnoses of the of AD, of the ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act. So, if you're experiencing long COVID, uh, don't worry about. And you're you're worried about work. Uh, the ADA will protect you. So, I want you all to be aware. We do have a law in place that protects people um, in their workplaces uh, if they've experienced long. COVID. We're done with the present and we're on to the future. We must ask ourselves, what will life after COVID look like? Maybe some people haven't even thought of it yet. How could they possibly think of life without COVID? What, what would life, life look like without COVID? Would we go back to our old, 2019 days, what, what would things be like? Like masks will continue to be used. This is our new normal. Yes, yeah, the new normal is changing. Some changes that occurred during the pandemic might be uh, permanent. Yes, that's something I'll talk about next. 
annual booster, more outbreaks as the virus continues to mutate into different variants. Next slide, please. The new flu, you might be calling this the new flu. First and foremost, COVID-19 uh, is not going away, not going away anytime soon. It will be around for a while. Uh, I hope not forever, but it will be around for a while. Next slide, please. Do you, do you notice the difference between endemic, epidemic, and pandemic? So right now, we're doctors, researchers are not focused on, oh, excuse me. We're not focused on solving the pandemic. We're trying to get this to an endemic. We're trying to shift this to an endemic and trying to get out of the pandemic. I hope, you know, this might be a new word for you, endemic. You, know, you might say, yay, uh, that this day will come where the pandemic shifts to an endemic. But there's an obvious difference between endemic, epidemic, pandemic. Epidemic is a few spots in a few places. Again, as history has shown us, when did the flu start? 1918? 104 years ago, right? I got my math right, 104 years ago. So at that time, it was a pandemic. But it is now an endemic. Will it, you're asking, will it take 104 years? Uh, for the Spanish flu, they didn't have vaccines until 1945. So if you're thinking what this look may have looked like, the government in 1945 was how the government uh, in 2020, uh, 2021 looked like when it was dispersing uh, vaccines. So COVID-19 started in 2019. The vaccine finally arrived close to two years later. And that's called uh, excuse me, interpreter, but for the Spanish flu in 1918, it took until 1945. So all of those years waiting for a vaccine when the COVID pandemic only took two years to develop uh, and disperse a vaccine. So that helped the, sh the flu shift to an endemic. All right, next slide. So when will things become an endemic? Who decides that? How will we know? There are many factors that go into play. The top three factors, uh, the severity of COVID goes down, uh, the deaths from COVID decrease. Uh, and I don't mean incrementally, I mean um, severely and quickly decrease. So if you look at all three things, will you know there are other factors, of course, but um, when the disease uh, 
stops laying up people in the hospital, when people stop dying from it, it will be, it will transition over to an end. We're going to switch interpreters. This is in fact a struggle. This is not smooth sailing, but with vaccines, with people masking, with herd immunity, we are, we are getting there, not on a global level. As I mentioned, developing countries have not yet, some of them have not yet even received vaccines. You may have seen this in the news. We need to get vaccines to these particular countries, so keep shipping them off. I um, mean, you may wonder why we're shipping them off. We should be focusing on our country solely. And yes, we can prioritize our country, but we have plenty of vaccines. We have an abundance. We actually have more than we need, and we can, we can share them globally. And now a lot of people are traveling again. That said, if somebody goes to one of these countries and comes back here, then they're spreading the virus. And we don't want that. We wanna support these countries for a variety of reasons. One of them, because it actually will be protecting us. So that is one of the reasons that we are helping developing countries at this point. And that is when that will, those markers will be when we can in fact celebrate that we are at an endemic, no longer a pandemic. So people talk about the new normal and you're right. We've already developed new habits. I'm curious what, what, uh, what you would identify as an old habit and a new habit. Some people said some things are gonna be here for good. What are those things? Yes. Right, outdoor dining, it's fun, right? People have expanded onto the sidewalks. Communicating without a mask, right? We figured out how to do that. Remote meetings, absolutely. I think that's here to stay. It benefits many people. I mean, there's, ma there's many perks to, to, to remote meetings. more of a focus on self-care and working from home. Leaving a mask hanging from the car mirror like it's the newest thing with Bob. Uh-huh. Like that one. Can't show your lipstick. Yep. A shifting of priorities. Learning of new technology. Speaking of virtual meetings, we've seen an increase. Virtual classes, virtual workshops, webinars, like we're, we're actively participating in right now. Somebody actually shared a story recently with me and I had never thought of it. I worked for Gallaudet for five years. And previously, you know, you'd have to, Go, get up and go to a meeting. You know, uh, obviously lots of deaf people at, on campus and you're bumping into a million people having a million different conversations. And by the time you get to, get to a meeting, then you've actually, you're already late because you bumped into people and had, had all those 15 conversations. Then you leave, you have another 1500 conversations, you get back to your office. Now with virtual meetings, uh, you don't have that problem anymore. You show up on time. You didn't bump into anybody and meetings are shorter. You know, you get to the point. There, there's no small talk. In real life, you get there and you know you you have your banter. People are talking about you know their personal lives and such, and then you get into it. But but you know screen time is different. People people don't want to be on the on on the screen all the time. You know Zoom fatigue is real, so people are moving things along. It's it's a different efficiency. I'm sure some of you have experienced the same thing. Deliveries. Yep, huge delivery services. We're seeing Uber Eats. Yep, yep, Grubhub, et cetera. Before people were, were, were you know, preferring that people come to their restaurants. And now, now restaurants are participating in these, these delivery services. And to be honest with you, you know, there, there's, there's, there's a lot of restaurants that are, are feeling that it's a waste 
to have tables indoor indoors. McDonald's, I have two boys, they love McDonald's. And we pick up the food and bring it home. You know, we're not eating indoors. You know, McDonald's is fine, they're surviving. Target, Walmart, they're doing deliveries as, as well. They're okay. It's, it's here to say. And one thing that you may not realize that's changed, that's here to stay. Is, is cleanliness. You're noticing a shift in that. Before, you know, the frequency of, of, of janitorial services um, in public places, that's, there's been an uptick. There's been, you know, people are, are paying more attention to workplace cleanliness, hospitals, airports increased cleanliness requirements. And also their HVAC systems are making sure that there is in fact ventilation to become more secure. They've, they've tightened, tightened up any potential ventilation issues. Now in, in an in a airplane, that's a closed ventilation loop. And so they've had to make sure that it is safer. They've had to replace the vent ventilation systems on airplanes. So a variety of things, hybrid work, right? It's wonderful, uh, you know, a mix of working from home and remote. Next slide, please. So looking at the future, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. I'll be honest with you. I can't, I can't see into the future. And it's unknown. It's a gray area. We don't we don't know it exists beyond beyond tomorrow, beyond today. But I do know that we're forever changed. The pandemic has changed our future. We just don't know what that looks like. Next slide, please. So keyword here, adapt. In order to accept change, you need to be able to adapt. Resisting change is, is going to be, is going to lead to more difficulties. We have to be flexible. We need to be able to pivot. Adapt is, is key word here. Changes are here and more changes are coming. So we need to be ready and prepared. We have to adapt. Okay, next slide. Now, what can you do to help us get out of this pandemic? get vaccinated. If you're already vaccinated, what can you do? Lead with unity love. Spread the word. Educate people about taking care of themselves, education, Exactly, all of these. You can't save the world, but you can save at least your neighbor, your friends, your family members, your favorite Starbucks barista. Have that conversation, are you vaccinated? Start with one person who's next to you. That's, that's how you help, one at a time and lead with love as our, as our foundation. And those people who are, who are resistant to vaccines, don't forget about them. 
potentially went to the same deaf school, the same college, they were your buddy in college, they're your friend, don't dismiss them. That doesn't mean you should talk about COVID, but you, you can stay connected to them. COVID of course will come up. You can talk about having been vaccinated and you know, you can, you can give them a couple, you know, pointers here and there. Maybe they ultimately will get vaccinated. Lead with love. Next slide. To get out of this pandemic, this crazy pandemic, it will require that all of us, all of us, it is not a one man show, all of us work together in communication, in supporting one another, sharing of resources, educating one another. It is, it is a team effort. So as we look to the future, we need to continue to recognize that we are a team in order for everyone to actually ultimately benefit and succeed. So as of late, a lot of people have felt like we're essentially out of the pandemic and are exhausted from having been so restrictive, but we are still in a pandemic. It is still a pandemic. Do not forget. Until it is officially announced that we are in, in an endemic, then we know the pandemic is over, but that is not the case. So continue with these precautions. Vaccination, supporting one another, education, masking, social distancing, do not let up. What you do today will help prepare us for the future and tomorrow. So stay with this. It's okay if you've started to feel fatigued from all of this. You are not alone, but I hope this presentation today will help motivate you to recommit and continue to be back, back on the horse and stay at it. We will get out of this pandemic. And the way we do that is absolutely 100% working as a team. Next slide. Thank you for watching.